This is a video on probability. It's Bernoulli trials and specifically it's about finding the probability of the kth success occurring on the nth trial. Okay, so here's our example. I flip a coin repeatedly and I want to find the probability that I will get my third tail on the fifth flip. So already we can see the similarity to Bernoulli trials that we've encountered previously in that we're looking for a certain number of successes in a certain number of trials. But this is a little bit more specific than the questions that we've encountered up to now, because previously we, want to have, we wanted to have a certain number of successes in a certain number of trials, but we weren't worried about particular trials being successes or failures in themselves individually. That's the difference here. I specifically want the fifth flip to result in my third tail. So to deal with this question, what I need to do is actually take my situation and split it up into two parts. The first four flips and the fifth flip by itself. And so what I actually want to happen here is that over the course of the first uh, four flips, I want to get two tails. And on the fifth flip, I want to get a tail as well. So overall, I'm going to end up having got three tails out of the five flips. So to find the probability of getting two tails in four flips, I'm going to use the same approach as I used for Bernoulli trials in the previous video. And the formula n choose r p to the power of r q to the power of n minus r. So that's going to deal with the first four flips. But now I want the fifth flip to happen as well, so I want this as well. Notice I've written in the word and, and of course the word and in probability means that I want to multiply. So I'm going to get my result for my first four flips, and then I want to multiply it by what I want to happen on the fifth flip, which is to achieve a tail. So I'm simply going to put in the probability of getting a tail on any individual flip for that calculation. So it'll be my Bernoulli formula, built in and calculated, times the probability of getting tails on this particular flip. So let's deal with the Bernoulli part of it first. I'm going to have four flips. I want to get tails twice. And I'm defining my success as tails, which is a probability of a half, and failure as heads, which also has a probability of a half. And now filling into that formula, I'm going to have four choose two, a half to the power of two, that's success twice, tails twice, and a half to the power of two, that's failure twice, that is heads twice. And again, that two is four minus two. And when I evaluate this, I get three over eight. Now, I'm going to multiply this by the probability of getting tails on that fifth final flip. Well, any individual flip of the coin has a probability of a half for getting tails. So I'm going to say three over eight times a half. My answer is going to be three over 16. So the probability that I will get the third tail on the fifth flip is three over 16. Let's have a look at a second example. Okay, so in this example, I have a spinner and when it spins, it can land on red, pink or blue. And we can see here in the diagram that red is marked with a 90 degree angle and pink and blue have angles of equal size since they're both marked with a dot. I want to find the probability that I get pink for the third time on the 10th spin. Okay, so before I begin doing anything here, it's probably a good plan to work out all my angles so that I can find the chances of each of these colours being the result of any particular spin. So pause the video for a moment, work out the angles involved, and then work out the probability of the spinner landing on pink, red or blue. So my angles are 90, 135 and 135. My probabilities are for red, one quarter, for pink, three eighths, and for blue, three eighths. Now, since the question's about getting pink or not, I'm actually going to focus this down to the probability of pink and the probability of not pink. And this ties into the idea of P and Q, success and failure. Since the question's focusing on the idea of getting pink, I'm going to consider pink to be success. And I'm going to consider not pink to be failure and call that Q. But like in the previous example, I want to get a particular outcome on a particular event. So I'm going to actually have to split my situation up again. How do you think I'll split it up this time? This time I'll split it up into the first nine spins and then separately the tenth spin. 
and I want a particular set of outcomes in the first nine spins and I want a particular outcome on the 10th spin. So in the first nine spins, I want to get pink twice and I want my third pink to be on the 10th spin. So I want the 10th spin to have an outcome of pink. So I'm using my formula over here for the first nine spins and then I'm going to multiply that by the probability of getting pink on the 10th spin. And that's just one individual spin, so that'll just be the probability that we previously worked out for spinning pink on the spinner. Before I begin to fill out the formula, I'm going to just list out my values. So in this case, n is going to be 9 because I want to have 9 spins. I want to get pink twice, and pink is my success, which is a probability of 3 over 8. And anything except for pink is a failure, and that is 5 over 8, and I had mentioned these previously up here. Um, on the page. So we're going to fill that in now. So that's going to be 9 choose 2. P is 3 over 8. That's success. And I want that to happen twice. And then Q is 5 over 8. That's failure. And that's going to happen 7 times. And I'm multiplying this by the probability of pink, which is 3 over 8. Okay, so it's time now to type the first calculation into the calculator. And as you can see here, I get quite a long decimal. So instead of writing it all out, I'm just going to go straight to multiply it by 3 over 8. And the result comes out as 0 0.0707223080801. So this is around about 7%. So there's an approximately 7% chance that this particular event will occur. Watch out for instructions on how to round in these kind of questions. Obviously, if the question asks you to round off to two or three decimal places, do so. But if they don't give you that instruction, then hang on to all your decimal places for accuracy.